to say hello and welcome back to Books and Things and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite writers and that is Stephen Sondheim. Now, Stephen Sondheim is not a writer of novels or poems or short stories, he is in fact a writer of musicals but I still say that he is one of my favourite writers of all time and his musicals are absolutely incredible. I love musicals, I don't talk about them a huge amount on this channel but if I were to write a list of my top 10 musicals at least seven of the ten places would be taken up by Sondheim musicals. I mean, that's how much I like him. It would be Sondheim, Les Mis, Hamilton, and maybe Evita by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Seven spots of Sondheim and three spots of other things, because Sondheim is that amazing and I love his musicals a lot. I have seen a lot of them, those that I haven't seen I've listened to the music of. I also went to the Sondheim proms they did about five or six years ago, probably longer ago than that, I probably misremember, but that was incredible. Um, and I think he's just an absolutely incredible writer. I love his work, I love the music, I love the lyrics which are often so clever and so smart and so quick and rapid and wonderful and more than anything I love the stories that his musicals tell and that's what I mostly want to talk about today rather than just have a ramble about how much I like Stephen Sondheim I wanted to talk about the storytelling in his work and the way that he uses structure and messes around with chronology in order to tell a story in a really interesting way. One of my favourite things about Sondheim's musicals is definitely the fact that they are quite unusual and often you hear the premise of one of his musicals and you don't understand how he could have turned that into a musical and often he does it through taking serious subjects and putting them to music in a way that works fantastically and also by using a narrative structure in a really really interesting way. So there are five musicals I want to talk about specifically today and I want to talk about the way that Sondheim uses narrative structure in these musicals. But first I want to quickly talk about how I kind of discovered Stephen Sondheim. My parents both really like his musicals which is how I got into them. I think the first Sondheim musical I ever saw was Pacific Overtures which I saw as a teenager. Now Pacific Overtures is not one of the ones I'm going to focus on today because it is a chronological narrative, although it does take place over a very long period of time, longer than you get in many musicals, but Pacific Overtures is a musical which takes place in mid to late 19th century Japan. The musical is basically about how Japan went from being a fairly sort of self-contained enclosed country to being a sort of country that traded with and interacted with the rest of the world. Not what you would think of as a subject for a musical, but oh my goodness is it brilliant. And after that I just fell completely in love and saw more and more musicals and I'm still trying to see more. There's plenty more I really want to see that I haven't seen and I just think his work is absolutely fantastic. So Sondheim is mostly a 20th century musical writer, although there are some of his musicals which are from the 21st century. He is still alive, he is 88 years old. His most famous musical by far is Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, which um, there was a film of a few years ago. I I haven't actually seen the film but I've seen this on stage and I think it's an absolutely fantastic musical. A little bit gruesome in some ways but also just the music and the cleverness of the lyrics is fantastic um, and I'd really definitely like to see it again. Not one I'm going to be focusing on today as it is more chronological in structure but I wanted to mention it as that is the musical by him you'll have most likely heard of. Another of his more well-known ones is Into the Woods which they made a film of a few years ago and which kind of made it a little bit more well-known. The film doesn't do justice to the musical in any way. The cast is very good but the writing and the cutting that they did to it didn't work at all in my opinion so if you have seen the film of Into the Woods and didn't like it don't base on time on that. The music is, is great but the, it didn't it didn't get the narrative structure thing and it didn't do it right but we'll talk about that in a minute. So I have five musicals by Stephen Sondheim that I want to talk to you about today, all of which make really interesting use of narrative structure and are unchronological. They are not necessarily my five favourite Sondheim musicals, well four of them are my four favourite Sondheim musicals probably, um, but there's one of them which will probably be beaten by some of his more chronological pieces such as Sweeney Todd or A Little Night Music which is a wonderful musical by him but is chronological. But I wanted to talk about these five because they use structure and storytelling in a really really interesting way and I wanted to talk about the way these musicals use structure because I think in the same way that I really love non-linear books I also really enjoy non-linear musicals and I think it's fairly like applicable to literature that's kind of written in interesting unusual ways and that if you like books that are structured in an unusual way you might like these musicals as well. So let's get into them. The first musical I want to talk about by Stephen Sondheim is his 1990 musical Assassins. This is a musical by Stephen Sondheim and John Weidman and it was based on an idea by Charles Gilbert Jr. Now Assassins is a musical about assassins. In fact it is a musical about the men and women who have tried, some of which have succeeded and some of which who have failed, to assassinate US presidents over the course of the history of America. 
again, not something you would think would make for a good musical, but oh my goodness, is it fantastic. And it brings them all together, sometimes in scenes with each other, and sometimes in scenes where you see their failed or successful assassination attempts on US presidents at the time. And the way that sometimes like blends history here means that sometimes you have characters who existed in completely different time periods singing duets together and singing songs together, and it really messes with history in a really, really powerful way to kind of link all of these characters together. It sounds like it shouldn't work, but it's absolutely fantastic. There are some beautiful and amazing songs in here, and he deals with an incredibly sort of dark subject matter in such a fascinating, wonderful way. I saw this live at the Menier Chocolate Factory um, a few years ago and absolutely loved it. The Menier Chocolate Factory is one of my favourite theatres, possibly my favourite theatre in London. It is a small theatre in what used to be a chocolate factory, um, and they do a lot of brilliant musicals and plays, and they do a lot of song time. So quite a few of the things I'm going to be talking about here I saw first at the Menier Chocolate Factory Theatre in London. This production of Assassins was absolutely incredible, and it's really interesting in terms of storytelling because it tells the stories of all of these individual people and their individual assassination attempts by kind of crossing over and interlinking these characters, having some joint songs and some sort of songs between them, and it just tells the story of all of these people from different time periods in such a fascinating, incredible way, and it's just, yeah, a musical I would highly recommend seeing if you ever get the chance. Next I want to talk about Sondheim's 1970 musical Company, which was written by Stephen Sondheim and George Firth. Company has to be one of my all-time favourite Sondheim musicals, and it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant story, and so interestingly told. Like Assassins, it is told in the kind of form of vignettes and messing around with time a little bit. The kind of focal point of Company is that it's about a man called Bobby, it's his 35th birthday. Bobby is single and the majority of his friends are married, and the musical is about him kind of coming to terms with his attitudes towards relationships and whether or not he wants someone in his life and whether or not he would like to be married. The musical begins with all his friends presenting him with a birthday cake and saying, blow out your candles, make a wish. And the kind of premise of the musical is that then the rest of the musical is him working out what he is going to wish for and if he's going to like wish for someone in his life. And therefore the rest of the musical is like vignettes of his relationship with his friends and various evenings with them and various kind of songs and duets that take place with characters who sort of are and aren't in the scene. Yeah, it's very hard to explain the way the storytelling works, but the best way to explain it is in the form of vignettes and different kind of pockets and memories that kind of all rush into to Bobby's head as he is thinking about what he's going to wish for. I love Company a lot, I think it is a wonderful musical and some of the songs in it are my absolute favourites. Marry Me A Little and Being Alive are just incredible beautiful songs, but also Sorry Grateful and Someone Is Waiting and Another Hundred People Just Get Off On The Train, and like so many of the songs in there are absolutely fascinating. And I also think it's a really interesting musical in terms of looking at like the theme of um, relationships, I suppose, and people who choose or do not choose to be in them, and the kind of pressure on certain people to get married and sort of what that means. And also just sort of the theme of marriage and how marriage works. Around Bobby are these five different couples, and you kind of get a look into each of their married lives. So Company is a musical I have known and loved for years. I've listened to the soundtrack again and again and again, and I went to see like a concert version of it, so it wasn't an actual production of it, but it was a sort of live recital of all the songs in it a few years ago. But I only first saw it staged actually just a couple of weeks ago. It's on currently in London at the Gilgood Theatre and it's an absolutely brilliant production. The synopsis I just gave is slightly incorrect for the current production of um, Company that's on at the moment because they've changed some of the genders around and Bobby is now a woman, which I think works very very well. It's an absolutely brilliant production, one that I would highly recommend going to see if you get the chance, especially the way they have done like the unique storytelling and structure of the musical where they have kind of room sliding on and off stage and it is a bit surreal but in a kind of wonderful, fantastic way. It's such a brilliant musical, one that I would highly recommend listening to and going to see if you ever get the chance. And the way it tells the story through a kind of series of vignettes, almost like a kind of interconnected series of short stories, is just absolutely wonderful. The next musical I want to mention is Sondheim's 1984 musical Sunday in the Park with George, which is written by Stephen Sondheim and James Lapine. Now Sunday in the Park with George is a slightly odd musical. When I saw it live many years ago at the Menier Chocolate Factory Theatre in London, I found it quite weird, and I loved the first half, and I found the second half hard to get a grip on. And then the more I thought about it after having seen it, the more I came to love it, and now I listen to the music a lot and I absolutely adore it. But it's a very interesting musical, and it's one where the first half and the second half are fairly independent from each other, and one, like Into the Woods, which I'll talk about in a bit, where Sondheim makes a great deal of use of the interval, and if you didn't have an interval in that musical, it wouldn't work. Sunday in the Park with George is based on a painting by George Siraz called A Sunday Afternoon on the, on the Island of La Grande Jatte. The first half of the play concerns a fictionalised version of George Siraz in 
the late 19th century, painting this painting, and then the kind of end of the first half involves the painting of that painting and kind of all the characters who you've seen like getting into position for the painting because every sort of figure who features in that painting becomes a character in the musical. And then the second half is about George's great grandson kind of struggling with his art and about like modern art as opposed to impressionism, which the first half looks at. Sounds mad, but oh, it's so good. It's so fantastic. It's really, really brilliant. I am not someone who loves art, visual art, I mean. Um, and often when I go to galleries, I don't get that much out of it. But the one artist who I love is George Surratt because of this musical, because this musical gave me like such a different impression and a different understanding of Impressionism and this painter that I now love his work hugely and like Impressionism. It's like the only visual art movement I find interesting and it's all because of this musical. The music is fantastic, the structure is so interesting. It is very much a musical of two halves, but the way it kind of links things together and, um, ties the various things up is really really interesting and you see so many sort of smart and clever correlations between these two characters the way they struggle with art and the way kind of their obsession with their artistry kind of affects their romantic and sort of familiar relationships it's so interesting and it's so well done and the music i mean if you're going to go and listen to any stephen sondheim song you have to go listen to sunday from Sunday in the Park with George, because it's just the most beautiful song ever. I will link it down below. Stephen Sondheimer has like a big reputation within musical theatre for being like really avant-garde and a bit like atonal and, um, you know, modernist, which he is to some extent, but to say there are no melodies and no beautiful tunes in Sondheim after you've listened to Sunday is just impossible. It's the best, it's the best. Anyway. Anyway, next I want to talk about Sondheim's 1986 musical Into the Woods, which was by Stephen Sondheim and James Lapine again. I love Into the Woods. It is glorious and clever and magical and incredible and so good. I've seen Into the Woods four times, in fact. It must be my most seen Stephen Sondheim production. I've seen one school theatre production of Into the Woods. I also saw an incredible production. The first time I ever saw Into the Woods was at the open air theatre in Regent's Park in London and it was incredible because as the title might suggest it is set in a wood. To do an outdoor production is just wonderful and it was so stylized and weird and incredible and it was just fantastic. It was so good. It was so good. I've also seen one school theatre production which is very good. I also, Nick and I went to see it at the um, exchange in Manchester a few years ago and that was really good as well and then I also saw it more recently at the a chocolate factory too so plenty of into the woods views in my life and it's such a wonderful musical with so many fascinating possibilities so the premise of into the woods is that it is a fairy tale or more likely it is several fairy tales intermingled together so you have the story of jack and the beanstalk cinderella rapunzel and little red riding hood and then linking these stories and a few others together you have a kind of central new fairy tale about a baker and his wife who long for a child and cannot have a child and they make a deal with the witch that they have to bring her certain things and if they do they will be able to have a baby and the musical is so clever, partly in the way that it kind of interweaves all these fairy tales together and partly in the fact that it relies very cleverly on the interval. In the first half of the musical, everything goes as things should go in fairy tales and the last song of the first half is called Happily Ever After. But then we carry on after the interval with what happens after Happily Ever After, where things start to go wrong again. And I love that so much. It's so clever. For me, like, I love the first half of the musical, but where Into the Woods gets fantastic and clever and brilliant is in the second half, where you get what happens after the Happily Ever Afters, where things are not quite right, where you see the problematic elements of those fairy tales in the first half come back to bite everybody in the second half and where you see the characters deal with very complicated and messy things where the narrator who's been with them for the first half is suddenly no longer there to save them and tell them how their stories will end. It's so fantastic and clever. One of the reasons why I don't think the film was great, like I liked some of the film, I thought the casting was really good, but the problem is is that Into the Woods as a musical doesn't work without an interval because otherwise it just has a false ending and you think it's ended and then it doesn't end. Especially because in the film they cut more from the second half than the first which meant you really felt like it was just about to end and then there was just like another half an hour um whereas in the musical the second half is is quite long as well and you get such a sense like you know at the, when you finish at the interval that there's another set half to go that there's the whole rest of the, after the interval so you know you're going to get all the stories kind of unraveling again and it's so clever and it's so smart and i love it a lot the best production i've seen is that one i saw at the open air regents park theater because what was absolutely fantastic about that, just like an extra glorious bit, is they had the narrator figure, 
in the musical be a child and in the first half he was playing with his toys and like telling the story and then the second half the child was asleep and having a nightmare and like the second half was like the nightmare of the fairy tales and it was so smartly done oh it's fantastic that production it was so good I'm getting very excited to talk about it it's probably enough to say on Into the Wiz for now probably my second favourite Sondheim musical and an absolutely brilliant, brilliant watch and listen, I would highly recommend it. But finally I want to talk about what is probably my favourite Stephen Sondheim musical and an absolutely brilliant and fascinating one in terms of the way it uses storytelling and that is Sondheim's 1981 musical Merrily We Roll Along. This was written by Stephen Sondheim and George Firth and it was based in premise on a play from 1934 which was written by George S. Kaufman. Now obviously the kind of premise of Merrily We Roll Along I think owes itself to the original play rather than Sondheim's musical. I cannot find the original play anywhere. If anyone can f tell me where I can get it that would be great because I would really love to read it but the musical itself is fantastic. I have seen Merrily Roll Long let's say two and a half times like company I went to see a sung through concert version that wasn't staged and then I also saw one student theatre production a while ago and then I also went to see it once at um, the Menier Chocolate Factory again where it was an absolutely brilliant production. It tells the story of three friends Charlie, Frank and Mary. Charlie and Frank meet when they are at college together in America studying music and shortly after they have left they also meet Mary. They become incredibly close friends and when they're young they have all these amazing dreams. Charlie wants to write plays, Frank wants to write musicals, Mary wants to be a novelist and they have such faith in the future to keep them together as best friends and to give them their dreams and then their dreams, their plans for their life and their friendship start to slowly unravel. But what is amazing and clever about Mary Lou Rollo is that it is told backwards. We start when, the, when those three friends are in their early to mid 40s and we go slowly back and back until they are like 21 at the end of the play. So rather than going from happiness to sad, falling apart, disgruntled, discontented, disillusioned, middle-aged. You actually go from the friends being apart from each other in the present and go slowly back in time to find out how their friendships unravel and to get to the hopeful moment at which their friendships began. It is so amazingly beautiful and poignant and having it work backwards is just a genius idea. I just, I love it so much. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The music in this play is brilliant as well. Definitely one where on some of the songs you can see where sometimes gets his um, reputation for being a bit atonal and experimental but at the same time there are other songs which are so lyrical and beautiful. I, I love it a lot and I think it's such a clever way of examining the friendships and relationships between these three people to have it kind of unravel backwards. Definitely a musical I would recommend, definitely one of my favourite musicals, if not my favourite musical of all time. The way that it tells the story is just fascinating and I can't recommend it enough. So that's it for today, five Sondheim musicals I would definitely recommend. I think this has been a longer video than I intended but that's no problem. He's an absolutely wonderful writer of musicals and I would highly recommend going to see any of his musicals when you get the chance. So I think that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and listening to what I had to say about Stephen Sondheim. Please let me know down in the comments if you are familiar with his musicals or if you like them or if you'd be interested to watch them now. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another Vlogmas video.